Okay, very quickly, as quickly as I can, S process, R process, um, and supernova. This is all different ways of making heavy elements, and maybe we should start at the end, which is this chart here. This chart here, for every element of the periodic table, more or less, tells you where it's made. Most of these are natural, as in we can find them if we dig up the Earth, um, up to about uranium-plutonium. Only ones um, from americium forwards are, or onwards are, are purely man-made because their half-lives are so short. But where does all this stuff come from? Well, the, the, the three processes, so to speak, are the R process, the S process, and, um, and in supernovae. Um, the S process is, is, is slow. Um, it happens mostly, I mean, um, sorry, things up to iron and less than iron are mostly made through the whole process of um, just stars, you know, nuclear fusion in the core of a star. Hydrogen forms helium, helium can combine by various processes, and, and, and that's a whole separate question. But the heavy elements, the elements that are heavier than, than iron, can't be made by that nuclear fusion process because if you, you can't effectively fuse anything that's, that's, that's heavier than iron. So how do we make it? Well, it's the basic process is a process called neutron capture, which basically means that very occasionally a nucleus will absorb a neutron and it will stick, which basically turns it into a slightly heavier isotope. Obviously, that doesn't make a new element. But that heavier element might well be radioactively unstable and might decay by the beta process. And in the beta process, a neutron turns into a proton and, hey, presto, you've made a new element. So that is the S process, where, you know, silver 109 absorbs, becomes silver-110, but silver-110 is unstable, decays by beta to form cadmium-110. Cadmium-110 absorbs cadmium-111, not stable. Cadmium-112, stable. Cadmium-113, stable. Cadmium-114, stable. Uh, cadmium-115, uh, uh, cadmium unstable. Beta decay down to indium. So you have this building up of different elements. And of course, they're present at different stages throughout the process. Uh, so you get different amounts being created. The S process stands for slow because this just happens over many thousands or tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of years. Okay. The R process is exactly the same as the S process, except that it's faster. Why is it faster? Because as one of the, the byproducts of the core collapse and rebound of a type 2 supernova is this very high neutron flux. Okay? In other words, instead of just, you know, I, I don't know the numbers, but instead of just a few neutrons passing through every cubic centimeter per second, you have millions and millions of neutrons passing through. So they sort of bang on and, and clump together and form these weird unfeasible things which then break apart and decay by the, the beta process and you're able to create extremely large nuclei because um, there's a limit to how, how much you can create. And that, that basically is it. So it's the same sort of neutron capture process for the R and the S process. It's just that the S process is slow and steady uh, whereas the R process uh, happens much, much faster because there's so many, just for a, for a second or two, there's so many neutrons around that neutron capture becomes something that, that happens very easily and very rapidly. Um, let me just have another quick look at the question to see if I have answered it to the best of my knowledge. Um, what is meant by neutron flux? So neutron flux, yeah, neutron flux is is the n amount, of the sheer number of neutrons passing through a, a small point in space or a small volume of space in a certain amount of time. Okay. Question answered. <laughs>